We're here at the 30th anniversary of the Hamptons Film Festival speaking with... Uh, Jules Nodé and Gideon Nodé's brother. Thank you so much for joining me, gentlemen. Uh, tell me about your film that's at the festival this year. So we're here to present uh, January 6th. Um, it's a two and a half hour documentary and I think how it differs from um, uh, how a lot of uh, people have covered it is well, one, we're not journalists, we're documentary filmmakers. Right. But what we wanted to show was to not, to, to, we wanted to be apolitical in a way. We didn't want to do a political investigation about, you know, why it happened, what happened before, after the impeachment, all that. All we wanted to, to show was the human stories that minute by minute of suddenly, you know, you're going along, you're either your police officer, your senator, your representative, your staffer, your journalist, and in, you know, as minutes are going by, your world is changing as, as you're seeing it. And what we wanted to show is that minute by minute of these human beings, regardless whether you're your you're title or if there is a D or R at the end, or you have a underneath that title or that um, uniform of a police officer. There's a human being. There's a mother, a father, a son, a daughter, someone you can, I think, identify with and leave the political at the door and just live that experience as a human being suddenly where you don't know if you're going to make it home. You're fighting for your life for hours in a small tunnel with 40 of your brothers and sisters against 25,000 people. Yeah. That's the stories we wanted to tell. Not the political one, the human one. How did you end up putting together the people that were in the, uh, the doc? Uh, that you, how did you choose? Mm -hmm. who was mm -hmm. there? Yeah. So we approached, I think we must have sent emails to every single member of Congress. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's just, it, it, you know, there's no shortcuts. You take the time. We moved to, uh, to D.C. from uh, New York for about four months just to, for the research itself. And you just meet people. You tell them your story. You tell them what we're, we're trying to, to achieve. You know, for us, on police officers were were a bit different from our background. You know, we're 9-11 survivors. We were in the towers following uh, firefighters on that, on that day. And so your uh, first responders are very close to our heart. They are, you know, they saved us. Yeah, I, I've uh, heard of your story. It's well, been published, yes. And so, you know, when we talk to these people, we come from a place of not of journalistic um, curiosity, but more as a um, survivor of trauma. And because that day is full with trauma and emotions and PTSD. And so to come to people and tell them, this is where we come from, this is what we're trying to tell. We try to tell the, that human story. Yeah. And I think it resonated with a lot of people. It was also very important for us to have a lot of Democrats and Republicans, because for us it was not about you know just interviewing one, one party or another. It was just the beautiful and incredible stories of courage, big and small, that you find in these moments where you know the world is crumbling around you and your first instinct is, my God, the, you know, humanity is, is over, it's horrible. You have these shining examples of you know, this gesture, uh, 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 courageous action of just saving one's life or just you know, putting your hand in the shoulder and saying, we're going to be okay today. And it's as small as that, but that gives hope. And that's what we wanted to show. So tell me about the style of how you do filmmaking. How do you complement each other with what you're creating? Uh, you have to imagine us as one monster with two heads. I mean, we really, we completely, we just complement each other. Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, it, Shideon might be more technical, I might be more, you know, uh, uh, the people person, you know, one of us is introvert, the other one is extrovert. I think that's the beauty of it, you know, we complement each other. Of course, we you know we're, we we fight and uh, and argue and bicker, but at the end of the day, you know we're we're we're, we're brothers and we love each other. So that's yeah. it helps us a lot. Did you have anyone in particular that stood out as giving you the most powerful testimonial from January sixth? That's in your doc. I think all of the police officers, because we interviewed about in there, there is about sixteen of them that have for I think all of but two have never spoken, and to see when they talk um, very uh, naturally, humanly about you know not knowing if they were going to see their wife and kids and, and, and you know, their fear for their brothers and sisters next to them. I think that really resonates in a way that, you know, a lot have been said about, you know, the, the politicians or all that, but here to see just these people who, you know, as they told us, imagine that for three hours you're, you know, you're 40 and you're fighting 25,000 and uh, it feels like, you know, you're getting hit uh, over the head with a baseball bat for three hours there. Yeah. Fists were uh, doubled in size, they, they, had, they had cuts, they had, you know, furniture thrown at them and everything and anything. Yeah. They, they, were, they were the last, the last line of defense. <clears throat> there were over, as Drew said, 25,000 people who wanted to get in yeah. and only uh, a, a few hundred uh, police officers uh, 
something that is completely insane <laughs> when you think about it. Yeah. But they they made a stand. It it was it was uh, you know it was like it's a contemporary modern uh, 300 uh, story. You know? <laughs> Sparta was the against the. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, you you definitely were able to capture a lot of the trauma from from the people that uh, were there on that mm -hmm. day. For audiences, uh, well, first it screened last night uh, as well at the festival. Yeah. What was the audience reaction uh, to the fest to the screening? Well, I think very positive. I think we were very happy because, again, it was very important for us not to make a political documentary and to try to stay as much. And, you know, having uh, as a partner Discovery Channel was fantastic because they're the ones we, you know, they're compared to maybe some other platform who might be considered more political than others. This one was a great possibility to show an audience that might not be, you know, inclined to go watch it, but suddenly to see it on the channel they trust and, and to see it in a way that is you know, concentrates on, on the humanity of it. That, I think that could bridge a lot of, uh, of misconceptions about that thing. Do you, have, do both of you thrive in an environment of uh, extreme pressure? <laughs> <laughs> if you know, did the 9-11 one yeah. on January 6th, mm -hmm. is, that, is that where you really find your, your gold spot? It's, uh, yeah. it's strangely, it's like <laughs> after what happened at 9-11, uh, yeah. so surviving that, but, but witnessing the horror, but at the same time, as Jules said before, witnessing what's the best in in all of us yeah. and on that day of, of september 11 2001 we saw it with firefighters ever since then there is a kind of need uh, which uh, ref is reflected in every one of a documentary to always uh, go through those survival stories and get this Thing that somehow the people always manage to stand up again. I mean, uh, always, not always, but the one we meet, the one we are very privileged to, to interview, give us such much hope that it was so easy after 9-11 to become cynical, to become negative, to see the world as we can see it again today in the worst possible and, but no, you have those police officers, you have those journalists, those staffers, those politicians. You remove the uniform, you remove the title, you remove, and you just have people who did the right thing, who stood up. And that gives you so much strength yeah. and, and hope. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where can people go to find out more about the film? January 6th, I'm sure it's top yeah, Discovery Discovery Plus. yeah, I think they're they're about to. I think the press release come out and all that. So slowly, it's going to air on January fifth. Um, so I think it's uh, voilà. But um, but for example, you to go back on the apolitical. That's why we, you know, with Discovery, we didn't want it to be you know before the um, the midterms because we didn't want. And also for the people who wanted who who participated, you know, they didn't want to be kind of uh, using as a as a kind of a political tool in one way or another and that's why it was important to remove it from you know the midterms and leave it where it should belong is on you know next to that day to, to remember again you know we're bound to repeat history if we don't remember it so yes, that's I don't a, know. a very famous <coughs> quote and uh, I think that it ties in really nicely with, uh, with your film that yeah. uh, is screening at the festival in closing is there anything you'd like to say to the Hampton Square Festival for the first selection Oh, it's incredible to, uh, you know, I a little bit feel like, uh, you know, imposter syndrome with all of these incredible filmmakers. We're in awe. I think, you know, yes. that's where we see what a, an incredible and, and thriving community it is. It's, it's these incredible human beings who put themselves on the lines, uh, you know, to, to, to do that. And it's, it's, it's a privilege and an honor to be here.